the hat I wanted to. I would handle it, hand it straight to the, or, um, or especially paying bills if you want to do a bill payment, some type of automatic electronic payment online so that there's no check that goes out in the mail. Don't put outgoing checks in your curbside mailbox. Use, I said all these already. Use bill payments, uh, bill pay services. Cuts out a number of checks in circulation. Use a bill pay service. Not only that, but you don't forget it to send the bill. When you get the bill, you just set it up for three weeks in advance, and it'll go electronically. Monitor bank and credit card statements for accuracy. Someone was talking about that's how they got them, that's how they caught theirs. When those statements show up, I run everything through a credit card. When I say everything, I mean everything. Everything I can possibly run through a credit card that doesn't cost me to run through a credit card. And keep all the receipts. And when the receipts show up, I will match. Instead of paying individually, I'll just pay once a month when the, when the, when the bill shows up. But if there's a charge on the card, there better be a receipt to go with it. There better be a receipt to go with it. My wife has caught a little flack every once in a while when those receipts go missing. Yeah. <laughs> Bless her heart. But um, that's the only way to, to know what's going on. Same thing with your bank account statements. That's the same thing with your bank account statements. Once those statements are printed and received, you have 60 days from the day that those statements are printed and received to dispute anything on those statements. After the 60 days is up, if, if the financial institution does not have to reimburse any longer. You have 60 days to go over those statements. Okay? So if you postpone it or don't do it and come back six months later, there's nothing we can do. Not much chance of that. <laughs> You'd be surprised. They, they toss them back in. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Really? <laughs> don't throw away things from your, uh, with your information on it. Cross-cutting shredders we talked about. Empty walls and purses of excess stuff, Ex uh, extra credit cards, social security cards, birth certificates, passports. Get all that stuff out of there. Review all three credit reports annually. In other words, just go take a look at your credit report. Make sure the information there is accurate. Cyberspace. Getting out there on the Internet, what's safe and what's not safe. <laughs> Phishing scam. I think everyone know what that term means. Phishing. Fish, phishing is basically, um, I'm sitting at home and I send out, well, there's a lot of complex computer stuff that goes behind it, but I get into somebody's email address, um, outgoing book, and I can send an email to everyone that you've ever sent an email to. And I'll send it out that says, I'll, what they call a screen scrape. In other words, I'll take a picture of, uh, let's say, the Accu's website and put it out there Act like it's our web, act like it's DACU's website, and just ask you for some basic information. We have lost your information. Please fill out these three things so we can verify that we have, that, we, that you are who you are. Social security number, date of birth, whatever the case may be. And I send out that email to 5,000 people. Of those 5,000 people, not everyone's going to be a DACU member. So those people, hopefully, will just delete it right away. But they may find give them a high number, right, because everyone's a member. I give them, you know, they may find 200 of those 5,000 because they were fishing for those people that are actually members. Of those 200, hopefully 200 of them delete it because they know the credit union is never going to send you an email asking for that information. So if they get one or two, then it's been worth their while. They'll get the information and they'll have it. Okay. I mean, you, you get emails about winning lotteries out of Nigeria and Canada, uh, Canada lottery winnings and King whoever from Scotland wants to come over and doesn't have enough money, but he's got money. Yeah. If the end result of the email or whomever is trying to contact you about money is you have to wire money somewhere else, you're in the middle of being scammed. Okay? You're in the middle of being scammed. No financial institution, credit card company, federal agency will ever call you about asking for personal information. We talked about that. Might call to confirm some specific transactions, but not your personal information. If you're shopping online, check out the seller before you buy. Legitimate businesses or individual seller 
should give you a physical address and a working telephone number which you can contact in case you have problems. A lot of websites have gone to, like, I don't know if any of you use our home banking, but they have what they call dual authentication. In other words, when you log, don't smile. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> when we first rolled that out, it was a nightmare. Um, but our system recognizes your system. And so when you type in your first password, it'll shoot you a phrase back that says whatever you chose. Welcome to DACQ, Fred's, or whatever the case may be, so that you know that you're at the right website. Some of them have gone to security pictures, security phrases, whatever the case may be, so that you know you're on the right website, that you're about to put your password into the right website. That's what I mean by dual authentication. There's more than one, not just a username, but you have to have a username and password, and it gives you some information back. If you're at a computer that it doesn't recognize, it will ask you for a dual authentication, which is another password to put in. Or if you're at a computer that cleans your cookies every night, you'll have to put it in every time and re-authenticate that computer. That's just another way to make sure you're in the right place and we identify you not only with one, but with two passwords if we have to. Don't open attachments for people who don't, uh, you don't know, don't expect, or never uh, reply or click on links and emails or pop-ups that ask for personal information. My wife signed up for a, uh, a magazine subscription, I think. One day she was online trying to buy movie tickets. Got the movie tickets, but in the, I, I, I knew something went wrong when she said, I had to put my credit card information a second time. So once the bill started showing up with the, the statement, we got to cancel and they refunded the money, but all it was was a pop-up inside of another person's website. Passwords. On, uh, online, passwords. Keep the passwords in a secure place. Don't share passwords on the Internet or over email. Avoid using uh, easily available information like mother's maiden name, date of birth, or last four social security number, phone numbers, or series of Consecutive numbers as passwords or pin numbers. I love that. My password is one, two, three, four, five, six. It's not, but I'm saying as a as an example. Um, using we talked about using mother's maiden name or using some other type of word. Don't just write your passwords down and tape them next to your computer. Or carry them, you know, put them, you know, somewhere on your computer. That kind of sort of defeats the purpose. Use passwords with at least eight characters and include n uh, numbers and symbols. Basically, a, a general rule of thumb is the more sensitive the information for the website you're getting into, the more sophisticated the password needs to be. In other words, if you're just getting on, I don't know, checking out your frequent flyer miles on American Airlines, that one doesn't have to be real sophisticated because that just has your name, your address, doesn't have social, date of birth, any of that stuff. If you're logging into an account that you can transfer money out of from one institution to another institution, maybe through some type of retirement or IRA or some type of um, um, money market account, you're going to want that one to be a little bit more intensive. Okay? Change your passwords regularly, minimum of every 90 days. I didn't know you should do that. Changing your passwords. I'd forget it then. <laughs> Write it down, but keep it away from the computer. You <laughs> forget where you put it, so. <laughs> right? Right. It's, it's never anywhere. I mean, we, I mean, you know, we log into 17 different systems by the time we're in our database and in other places and stuff. That it, um, it gets confusing sometimes with the passwords we have to use. Um, use different or at least a variety of passwords with difficult, uh, difficulty based on the value of the information obtained, like I said before. Take advantage of stronger authenticating tools when available, like I talked about the dual authentication that the credit union has. Financial institutions, we didn't want to make that change. We were forced into it by regulation. We were forced into financial institutions. If it's sensitive information, we were forced into that. It was a good thing, but we were forced into it. Did you get many complaints when people did that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Until and it happens to, like going through security at the airport, they gripe and gripe and gripe. You know, but you haven't been a victim of that, so yeah. I appreciate it when they do that. Anytime know. we make a change to yeah. anything, anytime we change the color of our green, <laughs> people one come color in to another. Well, the 